after an unprecedented bushfire in Australia. An aspiring documentary filmmaker joins two conservationists in venturing into the outback to track and record all the animals left displaced by the bushfires. When they discover a terrifying unknown species, Bailey, the documentary filmmaker, is filming Grace, an ecologist in conservation, as she explains the traits of a few animals around them, like koalas and dingoes. Grace explains that due to the bushfire, there are more than 100 endangered species, and if they don't do something to help these animals, they will soon become extinct. Soon after, Ben, a master field biologist, arrives and Bailey thanks the two of them for accepting her and taking her on their team, as no one else wanted to do it. The three of them joked around for a while before getting straight to business. Bailey interviews a park ranger named Matt, and the latter explains what park rangers, like him, do which is to maintain campgrounds, control feral animals, look out for any illegal hunting, and more. Since the trio is going to venture into the outback, Matt gets their coordinates so they could activate the emergency beacon and send out a distress signal if they needed to. They are also going to use a satellite phone as there is no reception in the outback. Ben wraps a camera around a tree and explains that this device gets activated by heat and motion. They are going to leave four of these devices at different sites to survey the bushfire regrowth area for wildlife. Bailey interviews Grace and Ben about their action to conserve the endangered species, how to make plans for the future, even if there isn't going to be one, and if the two conservationists believe that science can save the world. Nightfall came, and a hunter named Gary had set out a campfire for the night. When his dog Goose sensed something nearby, Gary lets the dog be as Goose runs towards a huge tree with a hole in its trunk, whining as it stares inside it. Something inside the tree hole moves, and Gary hears Goose whimpering loudly. He goes to check out what happened, but he can't find Goose anywhere. He sees the tree and checks inside to see if Goose is there, but the dog isn't. He stands around the area for a while when he hears something moving above him, causing him to look up. Gary yelps, and blood spatters on the ground. Meanwhile, the trio is walking, following a trail they made as Grace plays nature and animal sounds with the megaphone Ben is holding. She plays a record of an owl's hoot and the three of them silently cheered when they heard an owl hoot somewhere in the woods. Using a thermal camera, they surveyed the area and gazed in adoration as they saw a baby Ka just waking up from a 20-hour nap. Bailey checks the trees using the thermal camera and detects something up in the trees, but when Grace and Ben turned to look, the creature was gone. The trio is startled when something quickly passes by behind them. They laughed as they tried to guess what it was, assuming it was just some kind of animal. They went back to their campsite, and talked about themselves for a while before going to sleep. Bailey couldn't sleep because of the creepy sounds some kind of animal was making. Grace explains that it was just an expressive possum, and Ben, sensing Bailey's discomfort, suggested that Bailey sleep in Grace's tent. Bailey did, and the two girls talked for a while before letting their sleepiness take over. Over the next day, Ben and Grace are packing up, while Bailey is filming a tree with holes in its trunk. The trio then drives to a different site to retrieve the cameras left by another team. They pass by a certain tree, and stop when they find a huge fallen tree blocking the way. They continue on foot, and Grace marks a hollow-bearing tree. She explains that a hollow-bearing tree supports a diverse range of animals, so if it is removed, it can be the final factor that will affect the extinction of one species, which in turn would affect the survival of a whole other species. While walking, Ben couldn't help but notice that the bird seemed agitated, and the forest itself felt strange. They found one of the cameras left behind by another team on the ground, and checked its contents, realizing that it was in still mode. Pictures of different animals passing by were shown, until they stumbled upon a picture of a deer seemingly getting captured by something they couldn't recognize due to the camera being blocked. They thought that it must have been illegal hunting, and called Ranger Matat, who agreed to meet them. The trio continued looking around, until they discovered a skeleton of what they assumed was a large animal. They also noticed bits of gray fur left behind. Bailey, with her camera, walked away from the two conservationists to continue looking around. She noticed huge claw marks on a tree. Grace and Ben approached the tree and noticed how large the claw marks were. Whatever animal it was had two thumbs, which Grace explained that some marsupials have for climbing and hunting. They realized that the owner of those claw marks probably went up the tree for the bait they would often leave behind. They suggested leaving more bait so they could identify the animal. After leaving some bait, the trio decided to linger around the area and talk while waiting for Ranger Matat. Bay filmed Ben as the masterfield biologist talked about the history of Carnifex a term used to refer to the public executioners in ancient Rome, which literally means the maker of meat. During the last days of the dinosaurs, the ancient ancestors of marsupials were a lot bigger than the present marsupials, and among them was T. Carnifex, which was highly territorial. It was said that if you entered its territory, it would prey on you, but unlike lions, T. Carnifex was extremely smart and strategic. It would silently stalk its prey, and once it found a perfect chance, 
it would jump on its prey, bite down on the prey's jugular, and sever the spinal cord. According to accepted science, T. carnifex went extinct due to natural climate change. It was already dark, but there was still no sign of Matt. The trio was getting curious why he was taking so long, and Ben decided to send a message to the ranger. Unbeknownst to the trio, Matt had already reached the area before nightfall and had stumbled upon an abandoned car. He checked the forest and discovered an abandoned site. Gary set up the site, then continued to look around. He came across a gun on the ground next to a tree and saw Goose staring at him from behind the tree, growling menacingly. Suddenly, an unknown animal attacked Matt, biting down on his jugular and dragging him into its lair. When Ben spotted something behind a tree on the thermal camera, the trio watched in anticipation, only to be disappointed when it turned out to be a feral goat. However, they heard the goat whimpering and noticed an unknown species climbing a tree. Excited by the discovery, they eagerly discussed being in biology books for identifying a new species. Grace and Bailey continued to observe the animal through the thermal camera, while Ben followed the unidentified animal. When Grace fell into a pit, Ben went to help her, only to be attacked by the unidentified animal. Grace hid under a tree branch as the animal searched for her. Meanwhile, Bailey, flying the drone, feared the unknown creature coming for her. Gary set up the site, then continued to look around. He came across a gun on the ground next to a tree and saw Goose staring at him from behind the tree, growling menacingly. Suddenly, an unknown animal attacked Matt, biting down on his jugular and dragging him into its lair. When Ben spotted something behind a tree on the thermal camera, the trio watched in anticipation, only to be disappointed when it turned out to be a feral goat. However, they heard the goat whimpering and noticed an unknown species climbing a tree. Excited by the discovery, they eagerly discussed being in biology books for identifying a new species. Grace and Bailey continued to observe the animal through the thermal camera, while Ben followed the unidentified animal. When Grace fell into a pit, Ben went to help her, only to be attacked by the unidentified animal. Grace hid under a tree branch as the animal searched for her. Meanwhile, Bailey, flying the drone, feared the unknown creature coming for her. She hears something jumping from trees to trees. When she sees Ben's head-mounted flashlight falling from a tree, she quickly runs away in fear, calling for Grace. She finds the car and gets inside to hide, honking the horn to get the other's attention. The unidentified animal hears this and walks away from Grace, who crawled out of the pit and hid inside the shed they found earlier. Bailey hears something from outside the door and cautiously opens it to see a dog, Goose, looking in. She invites the dog in and quickly closes the door. On the other hand, Ben is left on top of the tree, severely injured. He moved and fell from the tree before crawling into the hollow of the tree to hide. Not knowing that it was the unidentified animal's home, he feels something dripping on his cheek. When he looks up, he realizes that the unidentified animal looks exactly like the T. carnifex he was talking about. The carnifex growled and pounced on him, dragging him up for a nice meal. Grace notices multiple holes on the shed's wall and peeks through them when she hears something. The carnifex passes by the shed, and she flinches away from the wall, backing away in fear as the carnifex searches for a way inside the shed. Grace runs out of the shed and into the car, startling Bailey, who has fallen asleep. Grace tells Bailey what happened, and they run back into the forest to help Ben, with Goose following them. They find the hollow-bearing tree and see blood all over it. Inside the tree, Grace checks the stuff left on the ground, crying upon realizing that it was Ben's. They hear the carnifex approaching and run back to the car. They drive away, but an uphill slope prevents the car from moving. They step out of the car again to try to push it up the slope. Grace attaches a rope puller to the tree in the car before telling Bailey to get back inside the car to keep it moving while she stays outside, to guide. But the rope snaps, hitting Grace and causing the car to roll down the slope. Bailey cries out in pain but abruptly stops when she hears the carnifex approaching. She grabs the thermal camera and looks around, getting startled when the carnifex jumps on the car. The carnifex looks at her, the windshield being the only thing keeping them apart. When the camera Bailey was holding suddenly flashed, it blinded the carnifex for a bit. The Carifex approached the car and attempted to get in, but failed and left when Bailey struck it. Grace then emerged from behind Bailey and offered her hand to help Grace into the car for safety. However, they quickly realized that it wasn't safe inside the car as the Carifex grabbed Bailey by the leg and pulled her out unexpectedly. Goose reappeared from wherever he was hiding and bit the Carifex, distracting it from Bailey. Bailey ran behind Grace, who followed with a gun and ordered Goose to move away from the Carifex. The gun only had one bullet and Grace took her time aiming and firing at the Carifex. She hit the Carifex, but it did not affect the centuries-old animal. The Carifex stared at them for a moment, before deciding they were too much trouble to catch and gave up. In a state of relief with no cars available, the two survivors, plus Goose, 
were left with no choice but to walk out of the Carifex territory and out of the forest.